future. And one of the things I promised to do when I kicked off Mr. Mobile was stay in touch with viewers like you. So far, the most asked questions in the Mr. Mobile comment section have been, where do you get your music? What game are you playing at this timestamp? And what technology do you use on a daily basis? Well, the answers to the first two questions are the same. Check the description. And the answer to the last one is, check out this video. So let's start with the small stuff. In pretty much every video I've published, you can see this little black and gold device on my right ring finger. Now, this is not, as my colleague Russell Hawley speculated, a replica Green Lantern ring, but something called a sesame ring. This was made by an outfit out of MIT called Ring Theory, and it contains the NFC component of my public transit pass, what we in Boston call our Chally CAD. So when I need to get someplace on the bus or train, rather than trying to tap my wallet, which has a ton of other NFC cards in it, I just give a little fist bump to the turnstile, and off I go. Next up on the opposite wrist, a device you're probably familiar with, because it's the prototypical Android smartwatch, the Moto 360. This one is the second edition, released last year, with the silver metal bracelet, because I didn't want the leather getting funky over time like it did on the first gen. Also, I went with the 42mm casing rather than the 46. I figured the smaller watch would look better on my average size wrists, and I gambled that its smaller battery wouldn't matter much to a guy who charges the thing every night anyway. Turns out I was right on both counts. You can make fun of the so-called flat tire, you can scoff at the decision to go with LCD over AMOLED, and you can balk at the high price. All valid complaints. But I've grown to love the Moto 360. No matter which phone I'm carrying, it's almost always paired to this watch. That's with the exception of my Windows phone, of course. As you might expect from the guy formerly known as Captain Two Phones, I usually carry more than one mobile, and the second is almost always my Lumia 950. I run stock software on it, no insider builds, because I like to stay in touch with what the normal Windows 10 mobile experience is, if there is such a thing. I couldn't live with that dull and cheap back cover that comes in the box, though, so I picked up a brown leather one from Mozo, which also turned out to be pretty cheap. Oh well. Anyway, Continuum is still really fun when I want to plug into a monitor and run a stripped-down Windows 10 machine. And as for the phone itself, well, I'll circle back with a re-review once the anniversary update lands later this summer. For now, suffice it to say there's a reason it's my backup phone. Still, even a B-list phone needs a friend. And because wearing two smartwatches is lame, but apparently wearing a smartwatch and a fitness band is okay, I bought a Microsoft Band 2 on my birthday this year. Would I buy it again? Probably not. I have some build quality complaints, it has some connectivity issues, and to be honest, this thing is supreme overkill for a guy whose workouts are confined to brisk walks to and from the Dunkin' Donuts. Now, when a smartphone screen just isn't enough, which is often, by the way, I've got a few machines to choose from. I love the power of the Surface Pro 4, and I like the portability of Google's Pixel C, which still feels more futuristic than any laptop I've ever used. But most of my work, obviously, is video. And because I edit in Final Cut, the Retina MacBook Pro from Apple is my go-to notebook most of the time. It's big, heavy, and so commonplace in Boston that I had to stick a Federation logo on mine to tell it apart from my roommates. But it's a reliable workhorse that lets me publish videos of the same quality whether I'm in Boston, Bill Ricca, or Barcelona. And what about that most asked about of all pocket gadgets, the much ballyhooed daily driver? To be honest, I don't have one yet. All the phones I've used since launching Mr. Mobile have been review devices, and my usual go-to, the artist formerly known as Motorola, is still a couple months from releasing its new flagship. Also, while I recently named Samsung's Galaxy S7 the best Android you can buy today, that's not the one I prefer to carry, personally. That honor, for now, belongs to the HTC 10. Its rock-solid build and speedy software are what got me on board in the first place, and the optically stabilized front-facing camera is what kept the 10 in my pocket. It made it so much easier to film all those behind-the-scenes time-lapses, and periscopes, and snapchats with you guys while we were building Mr. Mobile. I have more to say about the 10. Watch for a full review landing soon after this video. And HTC gets another mention in this video. When my Bose QC35s are just too hot and heavy for a summer walkabout, I use HTC's Active Buds. They're sweatproof, magnetic, and pseudo-stylish. They've been a mainstay in my pocket since last summer. And finally, no technology tour is complete without a little bit of a throwback. This is my keychain, and this is a ballpoint pen. 
useful for geocaching, filling out customs papers on an airplane, and keeping in touch with yesterday's most ubiquitous communications method. It pays to remember your roots. I received no promotional consideration for featuring these products. Translation, I didn't get paid to pimp them. But if you want any of these for your own, the links are, guess where, in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to Mr. Mobile if you enjoyed this one, folks. And also, let me know what you carry. Drop your EDC in the comments below.